Austria, Vienna, summer 2014. On arrival, she immediately goes to the hospital where her husband is currently being treated. Finally, they meet. How are you feeling? Just being together is a rare opportunity. Look, I understand that you're in pain, but I'm sorry, don't you think about me at all? I wouldn't be doing any of this if I didn't have faith. I'm sorry, but I believe we'll make it through. In broad daylight, in the heart of a European capital, an attempt was made on his life. An act of terrorism. Vladimir Vashkevich, until recently a high-ranking government official, head of the Customs Criminal Board and Deputy Director of the State Revenue Service of the Latvian Republic. Will this be okay for you, or is this better? All right. It's a miracle he survived, but the injuries he sustained from the explosion require regular rehabilitation therapy. His motor system has been damaged. Any additional stress he sustains now could cause cerebral paralysis or even a stroke. At the hospital, Vladimir is cared for by his eldest daughter, Diana, almost round the clock. I spend most of my time, almost all of it, with father. Once you start thinking about it, then it really becomes terrifying. It's terrifying to think that her father could be a tangible threat to many influential and powerful people in the political and criminal circles. But he is still alive and knows too much. Who would my murder have benefited? Now I know for sure who's behind all this. December 2013. This is his last interview. I knew that I had become an object of political bargaining. This is the first time Vladimir Vashkevich has decided to openly state who was behind the attempt on his life, which the Prime Minister of Latvia has aptly dubbed an attempt on the state. My murder would have benefited the KNAB and the special services, who'd been extorting money from my wife all along with the criminals. This confession sounds like political sensation, because the KNAB is the Latvian Corruption Prevention and Combating Bureau, which was created in the image of the legendary Independent Commission Against Corruption in Hong Kong, an acclaimed benchmark for many countries of the European Union over the last 10 years. They were fulfilling a political order from their sponsors, from the Unity Party, the politicians in that party who saw me as a thorn in their side, an inconvenience. And these words are simply shocking. Unity is not just a party in Latvia, it is a major political force. European money has been used to build an entire system to protect the interests of one political force which is at the same time extorting money, protecting smugglers, laundering money, and the list just goes on. And all this using European money. This, of course, leads us to the main question. What is really hidden behind the facade of a young democracy and small Baltic country that's always seemed so peaceful? Inara Vilkasta, Vladimir Vashkevich's wife. I met Vladimir in school. He was one year older than me. We dated practically since we were 14, 15 years old. They got married in the August of 81. And by the April of 1987, they divorced. But the most amazing thing is that exactly 25 years later, they got married again. As the saying goes, every cloud has a silver lining. We understood that we can survive this war only if we stick together. I have to fight. I must fight and win. How can I possibly break when she's given me so much? 
But back then, at the end of the 80s and at the twilight of the Soviet state, in an age of perestroika, publicity and acceleration, their family drama titled The Divorce was a push to move forward. As Vladimir began his service in the Riga customs, Inara was raising the children while taking her first steps in business. Now, she's one of the most prominent developers in the Baltics. Forbes magazine featured her in the ranks of Latvia's most successful self-made women three times. Inara made her fortune by building and selling real estate to the middle classes, bringing in investments from Western Europe. You get a really amazing view from here. See how beautiful it is? The forest? Her name is well known in the professional circles of international developers and architects. I like to work with Inara, I like her drive, I like her strengths, and yes, we're doing other projects. Vilkester's colleagues and partners all agree, the way this woman does business is the same way she lives her life. For example, this is her house on the outskirts of Riga. You might have expected a pompous palace, typical of a millionaire of the post-Soviet age, but this is a modest middle-class home. But if I come in? The company's head office is also pretty modest. This is my office. A portion of my life takes place within these walls. This is where ideas are born. Inara often organizes charity evening events for disabled orphans, but even here she tries to stay away from the cameras and rarely gives interviews. These children can be helped. How can you refuse after looking into their eyes? That's why this is such a lucky break for the lifestyle press. Someone managed to snap a picture of Vilkester with former American President Bill Clinton at an international conference for the encouraging of global dialogue. But today, her home is filled not with joy, but with tears. In the last big interview she gave, she won't even mention the history of her professional success. I have filed a complaint with the European Court of Human Rights about the harassment, the constant phone tapping, the invasion of privacy, when all human rights that can possibly be violated are violated. A very harsh phrase was said to me. The elections are coming, and if you don't pay up, what I will say will drop the bomb. Which is basically what happened. Except that I had no idea what kind of bomb he was talking about. Let's take a moment to look back at that day. May the 21st, 2007. The outdoor surveillance cameras by the Customs Criminal Board Office in the capital of Latvia have captured the attempted murder of Inara Vilkasta's husband, Vladimir Vashkevich, by planting a bomb in his car. The bomb was put here, under the rear bumper. I regained consciousness in the reanimation ward, like in a haze. I remember the Prime Minister visiting me at the hospital. Igas Kalvatis, who was Prime Minister at the time, labelled this act of terrorism an assault on the state and promised the country those responsible would be found and punished as quickly as possible. The investigation lasted four years. As a result, Lithuanian citizen Edgar Krogert was given a life sentence. But Inara Vilkaster is certain that they got the wrong person. And she has proof. The investigative report showed that the bomb was planted by someone 1.8, 1.85 meters tall, whereas the forensic report states that the incarcerated person is only 1.74. Indeed, here is the official report by the Riga Technological University made at the behest of the investigation. The person who planted the bomb was 180 to 185 centimeters tall. And here is the medical report on convict Edgar Krogert. His height, 1 meter 74 centimeters. 10 centimeters is quite a substantial difference. Nevertheless, 
Such things are just ignored. I believe Edgar Krogut is in prison for no reason. He's been convicted for nothing. Tonight, Inara is taking us to the very place where the terrible tragedy occurred. Riga, Export Street, the main entrance to the Customs Criminal Board's office building. The Anti-Corruption Bureau and detectives were watching Vladimir, tapping his phones, and yet the explosion still took place. Once again, the same stunning version of events, a version that beggars belief, comes to the fore once more. The intelligence agencies knew about the explosion. They knew about the upcoming assassination attempt. Vladimir Vashkevich adds some specific names to the picture. I believe that the following people are responsible for the attempt on my life. SAB agent Igars Sparic. KNAB agent Yuris Yurish. Criminal Raymond Stauberg. And the former President's Security Service agent Edgar Gulbis. This may seem a paradox, but it's a fact. All these people were initially featured in the Vashkevich assassination attempt criminal case, but sometime later, their testimonies were classified and labelled state secrets for reasons foreign to European law. Latvian journalist and political writer Lato Lapsa tried to find out why. This is a very strange case. The telephone conversation recordings have been destroyed during the criminal investigation. In his book, The Other Kitchen, he has given a detailed account of the dangerous connections between the Latvian intelligence agencies and the criminal underworld. It turned out to be a real detective story about rogue police officers. These people were very interested in explosives and the engineering behind an explosion. In fact, Gulbis was an explosives expert, and he's connected to Stahlberg. If you want my opinion, I believe that these people have a lot more to do with the terrorist act than the scapegoats that had eventually been arrested for it. On the other hand, removing me, killing me, would have given the KNAB and the special services the opportunity to keep successfully backing smuggling flows and laundering money, which is what happened. But let's start from the very beginning, 2001, the beginning of the Latvian customs reform. My job was to set up a customs criminal board, in other words, customs police. Meanwhile, Latvia is shaken by the first prominent contract killing in the country's history. Hitmen target Vyacheslav Listsov, Vladimir Vashkevich's ally and colleague. He was head of the Latgalian Regional Department of the Latvian State Revenue Service. I had to talk with him before the murder. He told me that he'd uncovered something that looked a lot like smuggling. This is a reference to a long-running heroin trafficking operation which Vyacheslav Listsov is believed to have uncovered. After his murder, I knew I had to be careful. It's a shady story. It turned out the special services had been involved. It turned out the special services had been involved. That was when I knew that our own men could be traitors. One of the versions at the time was that Listsov's investigation was a hindrance to somebody at the Latvian security police. Before the creation of the Customs Criminal Board, fighting smuggling was the responsibility of the security police. This is the moment when Vladimir Vashkevich notices one very important detail that will probably play a key role in defining his fate. The KNAB was established on the basis of the security police. Its officers transferred to the KNAB. The people who for years had been imitating a battle with smuggling and were making good money from it. At the end of 2001, Vladimir Vashkevich begins an unprecedented reform to reinforce the state's external borders and economic security. But at the same time, he suddenly finds himself facing a barrage of political changes in his country. A new force comes to power and blows away the people the old power put in their places. And by default, I was among those who'd been assigned to this position by the old government and who had to be removed. It's probably no secret that politics is a dirty business, especially when big money is involved. Almost all former Soviet countries have experienced this firsthand. The question is, what means are people in power turning to to get their way? We can see the intelligence, meaning the Corruption Prevention and Combating Bureau collaborating with criminals. That is an indisputable fact. Jurgis Lipniaks 
was an advisor to two of Latvia's prime ministers, Andris Schele and Igar Kalvatis. He remembers how and when the powerful four-letter special service appeared in his country, the KNAB, the Corruption Prevention and Combating Bureau. October the 5th, 2002. The New Time Party wins parliamentary elections with the slogan Fighting Corruption. Five days later, the KNAB is established with the party's support. Obviously, they had to start dealing with corruption and come up with some specific names. After all, that's what they promised and what everyone expected from them. And it became a convenient setup for getting rid of opponents. Obviously, the opponents were New Times political rivals, which made them all corrupt by default. One anti-corruption scandal after another begins shaking Latvia. Among the first to be accused are prominent figures from the political and business establishments the People's Party founder and former Prime Minister Andris Schele, as well as notable entrepreneurs Einar Schlesers and Ivars Lembergs. It's a new European record. The trials have been going on for 10 years, but we've yet to hear of at least one conviction. The Corruption Combating Bureau, a very convenient way to destroy people without any real proof of them actually being involved in anything. It goes without saying that neither Mr. Schele nor Mr. Schlesers have a political career anymore. I have seen KNAB intentionally destroy the political rivals at the New Time Party, the party currently known as Unity. Vladimir Vashkevich escaped unscathed from that political massacre then, probably because the new powers desperately needed his work on the reinforcement of the customs frontiers to speed up integration into the European Union. And so, on May the 1st, 2004, the Latvian Republic becomes a fully-fledged European Union member state. The legal aspects of the country's accession were at the time the responsibility of the Secretary-General of the Council of Europe, Dr. Walter Schwimmer. When I recommended that Latvia, uh, with its um, sad history, uh, I'm really, really sad that things deteriorated since then and now we have to be concerned about the human rights of Latvian citizens and these unlimited powers of special services. Meanwhile, Inara Vilkaster is busy attracting foreign investments for the development of her business projects. The European uh, Union was a, a window for Latvia. It offered opportunities not only to me, but also to many other investors and entrepreneurs. She closes one of the biggest real estate deals in Latvian history, a deal worth 45 million euros. In our eye, we created a project with social impact, environmental impact, natural impact and economic impact, which for that time in Latvia was not the norm of development. Gunter Pittel is a renowned developer who has changed the faces of many cities around the globe. Here are just a few of the projects he has worked on. Famous next to London Tower. And I worked for the Orlando City Council. Did the sun chain of hotels. In Vienna, the famous house of music. In 2004, he took a risk and tried his hand on the emerging Baltic market. He chose Inara Vilkaster to be his partner. Bring environment consideration into Latvia. So Inara's project for investors was the new and, and, and leading project in Latvia. As a result, land purchased for what would be considered loose change by today's standards became a project worth an eight-digit sum. I didn't know what it is that she does exactly, but I remember very well how passionate she was about it. Looking back, I'd call it desire. The desire to prove that she's worth something, that she's a person, an individual, a woman. Meanwhile, Vladimir Vashkevich establishes his own law enforcement authority based on the experience of Great Britain and Sweden, the Customs Criminal Board. For the first time in Latvia, 
an analytical investigative approach is used to combat smuggling. It's an approach in which a business's activities are centered around risk evaluation and management. There were cases, there were people being detained in collaboration with the police. This is very important. This is Vladimir Vashkevich's former colleague, Igar Shveitsars. Cases such as the detainment of huge shipments of cocaine or contraband cigarettes, it was the day-to-day -day success of our work. He remembers how a small department consisting of only 28 people, headed by Vashkevich, grew to 180 employees. He managed to build a system that can be considered innovative by all European standards. On May the 12th, 2006, they seize a shipment of contraband cigarettes unprecedented in its size. On May the 15th, a car loaded with gas tanks explodes outside the gates of Inara Vilkester's house. Everything got burned down to the core, and then there was another explosion. You couldn't tell if it was night or day. I genuinely thought it was war. I still remember the sound of that explosion. It's hard to forget. On the same day, a group of unidentified people try to kidnap Inara and Vladimir's youngest daughter, Olga. I remember Inara's phone call. She was crying and told me, do you know they tried to kidnap your daughter? Then, exactly one week later, Igar Sparantz, an agent from SAB Counterintelligence, Latvia's most secretive intelligence agency, met with Vashkevich and gave him a very unsubtle hint during their conversation. All this can be stopped, just pay. Sparantz, an SAB agent, offered me to pay money to not be harassed. Vladimir thought it was a joke. He simply couldn't imagine that Sparantz, a government official, was capable of threats and extortion. But in June of the same year, Vashkevich survived what would be his first assassination attempt. Mask thugs douse his car with petrol and set it on fire. I met with Sparrows towards the end of May. On June 28th, my car was torched. It could, of course, just be a coincidence that while this was going on, the department headed by Vladimir Vashkevich, the Financial Police Board, identified corruption in a place it could not have been by definition within the KNAB, the Corruption Combating Bureau. I found out that the KNAB is literally stealing from the state, stealing money allocated for investigative work. Latvia is shocked. Prime Minister Igars Kalvatis himself is listening to Vashkevich's report. During my meeting with the Prime Minister, I considered it my duty to warn him of this. Meanwhile, by some strange coincidence, Inara Vilkester is receiving threats from one of her employees, Raymond Stahlberg. Stahlberg was trying to extort a great sum of money from me, unprecedented even by Latvian standards, seven and a half million euro. She said, Volodya, help me, what should I do? Being an employee of the law enforcement system, I told her that she should go to the police. There's no negotiating with terrorists. In November 2006, he is arrested and it turns out that he had already been convicted of the same charge, extortion, before. But here's an interesting fact from the interrogation report. Raymond Stahlberg insists that the KNAB heads be informed of his detention. Normally, interrogation reports state if the detainee wishes to contact his lawyer or for his family to be informed of his predicament. I don't understand. What do the heads of the KNAB have to do with the detainment of a criminal? This implies that they were supposed to somehow get him out of there, protect him, which is exactly what happened afterwards. As a result of the extortion case, Stahlberg was sentenced to seven years and six months in prison, forfeiting his assets. But yet again, for reasons unfathomable to any constitutional state, he was simply released right there and then in the courtroom. He had probably reached an agreement with the special services who were interested in Vashkevich. And this, in my opinion, what this is all about. They wanted Vashkevich. And I was just a tool to destroy him.
New Time members had this notion based on rumors and urban myths that Mr. Vachkevich is an important sponsor of the People's Party, but that wasn't true. In April 2007, the KNAB searched in Ara Vilkastas' house for the first time, the house where Vladimir Vashkevich had been living after numerous threats and assassination attempts. And there's the gate. They picked the lock. And over here they broke everything. The men dressed in black terrified their maid, Nina. My blood pressure shot up to 200. They turned the house upside down. They threw all these boxes down. And didn't find anything. I don't even understand what it is they were trying to find. I gave them everything. I showed them everything. One official charge had, however, been brought. Vladimir Vashkevich keeps too many sports training shoes at home. That shoe story. Wow, they sure got me there. What a blemish on my reputation. What else can I say? But what is most surprising is that the reason for initiating the criminal shoe case was a statement from Raymond Stahlberg. The very same Raymond Stahlberg who attempted to extort millions from Inara Vilkasta. After that search, it became clear to me that the KNAB was working on my case. Perhaps it's simply yet another coincidence that less than a month after the search, something else happens at the entrance to the Customs Criminal Board building, in the very heart of the Latvian capital. Vladimir Vashkevich's car explodes. Vladimir's assassination attempt, the explosives in his car, that's only half of the story. At the same time, a campaign to publicly discredit him is unravelling in the media. A full-scale, dark PR assault is launched against Inara and her husband. It was public execution, a lynching, a crucifixion, denigration. They were hoping I would leave. After all, everyone they pressured and persecuted before me had left, but I didn't. At the time, journalist Guy de Matissoni was the editor of one of Latvia's most popular newspapers. Was Vashkevich blown up to extort Vilkastas millions? This is an example of a planted article. When the Latvian media was overrun with compromising information in a raging information war, she left the industry. It's a blatant violation of human rights when information obtained through intel on the job during an investigation suddenly appears in the media and becomes public. The Latvian press alone published over 3,000 planted articles about Vladimir Vashkevich's family between 2007 and 2012. They went after Inara and started fabricating a case against her. Then another, and then another, and another. Meanwhile, Inara Vilkaster becomes a defendant in over 150 criminal and civil cases. One of the most absurd cases is the one where I was accused of stealing a mobile phone. Why would I steal a mobile phone? I'm not a kleptomaniac. I have my own phones. I mean, it's not just ridiculous, I can't even grasp this. And all these criminal and civil cases, it's just like Kafka's The Trial. Court hearings, investigations, interrogations. They crossed the line, and I can see they'll stop at nothing now. Even in our Vilkastas maid, Nina Mikhailova, a World War II survivor, is on trial. Do you understand the court's verdict? When the KNAB came to do another search, she was too afraid to open the door. She thought they were thugs. I suppose the Anti-Corruption Bureau found me to be a dangerous criminal. The initiation of so many legal cases means they can legally tap not only my phones, but also my children, my entire family, everyone who is close to me. The fact that the law and the system officially allow the intelligence to tap and control people based on some abstract suspicions that are never even brought before a court is a violation of human rights. In May 2010, Latvia was shaken by a new shocking crime. The disappearance without trace of Vladimir Vashkevich's lawyer, Einars Platatsis. I believe the same people who are harassing us are behind his disappearance, the KNEB intelligence agencies. If we're talking specific names, once again, it's Mr. Sparans and Mr. Jurash. An investigation of his disappearance is hindered. The Ropaji parish outside Riga, the road to Mutaniki village. If a person has been kidnapped, if he's nowhere to be found and there's no body, it means he's got to be somewhere. Here, on the outskirts of the forest, 
the police will find the missing lawyer's car. His jacket and his bag were over here, in the back, like this, and the car was open. Yuris is Einar Splatatis' brother. My common sense tells me that my brother is dead, but we still need to find him, at least so our father and mother and myself could remember him. Vladimir Vashkevich has a theory about this crime. There is a certain circumstance. Before he disappeared, I gave him copies of the papers showing Jutta Strikias, the deputy head of KLAB, involvement in a car accident that was eventually blamed on another person. Jutta Strike. According to the Latvian media, her real name is Anna Potapova. For 11 years, she had occupied the position of KNAB deputy head, and it's said that she ran the anti-corruption bureau almost single-handedly. The KNAB boys were out partying. They lost control of the car. One of the cars is smashed in the ditch, two are on the road, and the people were just completely out of touch with the reality. They were very drunk. Mikhail Podomarenko was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He accidentally became witness to the same car accident involving Jutta Stryka. I saw this blonde chick called Jutta, but I only found out that she's Stryka later. At the time, I knew her only as Jutta. I knew she worked in the KMAB. This encounter on the side of the road cost Mikhail his entire life. They literally ruined my life. I'm a bum now. I have no home, no job, my health's gone. At first, the KNAB tried to cow him into silence. They were threatening me. They told me my children will have problems. I asked them, what do my children have to do with this? Have you no shame? And then he was simply arrested and put in jail. Mikhail was accused of trying to pressure the investigating authorities. They made it very clear. All right, buddy, you want to go to the slammer? We'll take you to the slammer. We'll find what to put you in for. We'll come up with something. As a result, Mikhail lost his health, his business and his reputation. All because he accidentally found himself in the path of a dangerous blonde. I believe that Jutta Strikia is definitely behind all this. Her career rapidly escalated in 2002 with the coming of the New Time Party to power. But Jutta Stricker's path to power began in the same department that was often accused of backing smuggling operations and laundering money in the 90s. The KNAB was established on the basis of the security police. They came to work in the KNAB. Platitis, the vanished lawyer, was never afraid of criticizing Mrs. Stricker. He was the first to publicly announce that the KNAB uses an information gathering system that has been banned throughout the entire civilized world. Fishing expedition to initiate criminal cases. It is a way for the government to hunt someone using supposedly legal means. Today, all of Vladimir Vashkevich's family's legal matters are handled by Elena Kwiatkowska. Thanks to her, the European Court of Human Rights is beginning to learn about the Latvian spooks' innovations. The government is using all possible means to harass a single certain family. This includes years of tapping, surveillance, and actions that can be given the general term fishing expedition. Basically, where there's a man, there's a case. The events of the past few years seem like some sort of action-packed political crime thriller movie. In 2011, the New Time Party changes its name to Unity and emerges victorious from parliamentary elections. The cogs of history had turned yet again, and the Latvian Secret Services decided on a radical special operation to detain and arrest Vladimir Vashkevich. I immediately started asking for my lawyer. That was ignored. They then dragged me into a bus and, once in the bus, started purposefully beating me. My head, my stomach, my neck. The investigation claims that Vashkevich bribed his own employee, Talis Kravalis. I've known Talis Kravalis since 1988, way back since the Soviet customs. My colleague, a person I trusted and who I repeatedly vouched for. But why would one government official bribe another government official, let alone his subordinate? There is absolutely no connection between my supposedly bribing him 
and what I'm getting in return. That's what makes this accusation such a special snowflake. Talis Kravalis, however, obviously got what he wanted. Soon he'll be promoted to the rank of general and given a new position, a position that used to belong to Vashkevich. As we found out today, customs employee Talis Kravalis was simply recruited by the KNAB. But Vladimir will only understand the true reason behind his arrest once they begin to question him. They tried to get me to testify against Andris Shkeli, a man they've been hunting since 2002. Andris Shkeli, founder of the People's Party, has been Prime Minister of Latvia twice. Public surveys show that he's still very respected by the population. This may be why he's number one on the KNAB's and Unity's lists. Bullying, intimidation, terrible pain. It was all like in a mist. Vladimir Vashkevich did not agree to a deal that would have him discredit the former Prime Minister and spent several months in prison. But he will soon be released and with the court's permission will go to Austria, where his eldest daughter now lives. Instead of a warm family weekend, she became witness to a drama. Vladimir lost consciousness and was rushed to hospital they had to operate on my back, the consequences of prison. I mean the beatings and the torture. In Austria, Vladimir was medically examined by Dr. David Visoki. He is very strong, but I was surprised he could walk at all. Any other person would have been wheelchair-bound for life after sustaining such injuries. Professor Visoki confirms that medieval practices, such as torture, are being used to beat confessions out of people in a European country in the 21st century. While in prison, he was beaten every day. They mostly hit his knees. He has sustained extensive physical injuries, but I can say that they mainly hit his back and knees, which resulted in the formation of lethal hematomas. Patients who had undergone such severe trauma as Mr. Vachkevich can only get better in a good rehabilitation center, away from any danger or stress. News that a government official of a European Union member state had been tortured quickly spread through the Austrian capital. Latvia immediately demanded that Vashkevich be extradited. Myself, my husband and our entire family are confident that if Austria hands him over, he will be physically destroyed. He will be murdered. But renowned lawyers and human rights activists stood up in his defense. This situation has nothing to do with European human rights laws. I didn't think anything like this is even possible in Europe. Frau Elisabeth Rech is the vice president of the Austrian Bar Association. Today, with a team of professionals led by Dr. Herbert Pochizer, for the first time in the history of international legal practice, she is helping Vladimir Vashkevich, a citizen of the European Union, get political asylum in the European Union. Obviously, I'm worried and frightened, both for my family and for my life. It's a feeling I've had to live with for a long time now. Inara Vilkaster's life is now centered around this diagram with a simple and terrifying name, the timeline of my family's persecution by the government. I really hope that the European society and the European court will see this, hear of this, and pass a legal verdict to stop this torrent of terror and endless criminal cases. In 2012, Dr. Walter Schwimmer, former Secretary General of the Council of Europe, stood up in her defense. Politicians and agents of so-called special services, which are in Latvia beyond any control and obviously with unlimited powers. In the Austrian capital, he created a public committee, Justice for Inara. Because I think the public has a right to be informed when things like that happen in a European country. We believe that democracy does exist and that the European Union will study the situation from all angles. Inara Vilkester will remain in Latvia, although she could have sold her business and transferred her assets a long time ago. I am staying here to fight and protect not only my family, but also any other Latvian citizen. My story is not unique. And if the public learns about my story, about Vladimir's story, 
about this appalling persecution, about the threats, I'm certain that the other citizens of Latvia will find ways to protect themselves as well. Today, she is a frequent guest at European Human Rights Forums. My husband Vladimir's life, my children's lives, have been turned into hell. In the autumn of 2014, she received the Person of the Year Award in Poland, Latvia's neighbour state. I want to thank you. I want to share this award with my family and my children. They have walked a hard road with me, and they're still walking it. And this is Paris. The renowned Sorbonne, master of European law, Christina Kruger, is giving a lecture on the appalling Vilkester Vashkevich case. It appears that within larger Europe, as it arose from the fall of the Iron Curtain, the actual situation with respect to human rights, and in the cases of Inara Vilkesti and Vladimir Vashkevich, the above principles have not been respected by the Latvian authorities. Even visiting Vladimir once a month in the Austrian hospital requires Inara to ask the Latvian court for permission to leave the country, almost as if it were the Soviet rather than the European Union. Our only chance is making all this public. A criminal shadow government system was being built in Latvia over the past 10 to 12 years using European money. The people have no idea who really is running the country and who's capable of destroying anyone and standing in their way. At the end of the interview, Vladimir Vashkevich admits that despite everything, the thing he would love most in the world is to return home to Latvia, to feel alive again, breathe in the scent of the Baltic breeze, walk through the old streets of Riga, and of course, get back to work. And who knows, perhaps his extensive experience in reinforcing the external borders of the European Union will come in especially handy in today's escalated geopolitical situation on the continent. But this story is, first and foremost, a strikingly vivid demonstration that peaceful European life and well-being is threatened not so much by the enemies on the outside, but by those within. <laughs>